the air is going to, the oil and air is going to come out here. So here is my awkward problem. Having to punch this so I can drill it. So I'll put my special part in here. Oh, it doesn't want to fit. What's going on? I'll go make another one quick, quickly that's a little smaller. Alright, we have our washer. A little bit snugly in there. I hope I can dig it out. I think that hole is misformed from this break, this bend in the metal being here. There we go. Well, let's see if I got a punch mark. I see a very faint punch mark. Yep, I can feel it. I have a metal tab down here that's wanting to cut me as I swing the hammer. Let's see if I can find a way to hit this nicely. There we go. Watch this. Oh, a total miss. Let's try the washer again. Oh yes. Now we got a good punch mark. Right up there with my miss. You can see that? I know I'll be able to see it. Gotta drop the axle back down. Get it out of the way of drilling. That should be good enough. Spreading a rag to catch any drippage of oil. Put some oil on the bit. This is my mark right here. A little more oil. Probably gonna need a little more battery. Oh my goodness. Mm. There we go. Now, I can drill with the big drill bit out the other side over the, from the wheel well here, where I won't have to lay down under the trailer. Since I'm drilling this hole, has carried my mark through to the other side and gives me a guide for the large drill bit. All right. We got our we got our hole through right here. I have my Craftsman half inch 110 volt drill and I haven't pulled the trigger on this drill in at least 15 years. Just never had a cause for a half inch shank bit that wasn't in a drill press. Let's see what happens. Awesome. Turns nice and slow, which is what you need for a big drill bit. Let's see, I got an adjustable speed control. Let me see if I can get it adjusted slow. There we go. Let me get some oil. Boy, I miss the days of having a shop, access to a shop with a lift. Dip the drill bit in a little bit of oil. This is out of a silver and dimming drill index of Harbor Freight Origins. 
but it's about 20 years old, so maybe it's better than the newer ones, I don't know. More lube. Hey, we're breaking through. There we are, baby. There's one big hole done. I'll save you all the boredom and go do the other one. In private. Look, there's all the metal. There's the tool what done it. I got the two holes drilled. I'm going to lift the axle back up and see if they line up. The next morning, and we see where I drilled the hole in the frame. We've got the nut and bolt, got a flat washer on this side, a lock washer on the inside. These are fine thread, 5 8 inch bolts. Very strong. I've got them tight on both sides. Now we see the problem we have over here is a nearly overlapping hole. Look at this. Bam, bam. He's here to help. He doesn't understand that everything he does nudging my arm around is not helping. Anyways, um, we have to drill a hole here. Where this hole goes doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do it in a workmanlike fashion. Uh, so I'm going to set a one, two, three block up against here, and I'm going to come over here three inches and scribe a vertical line, and then I'm going to line it up with the bottom and scribe a cross line, and then we're going to punch it. And I'm going to do it the same way on both sides. Now, this axle can never be flipped around. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. Um, none of that stuff, but I just want to do things in a workmanlike way. When somebody follows behind me and looks at my work, I want them to look at it and go, oh yeah, you know, somebody did this and knew what they were doing. This was done carefully and done well. Um, if you get in the habit of half-assing things, you'll end up half-assing them where it does matter. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and do this nice. Maybe I'll just come over here two inches and up an inch. Same as the other side. I'm going to spread a cloth down here to catch all my shavings and any oil I drip. Put a little bit of oil here on the metal up above where I'm working. I'll have a nice feed of oil into my hole. Put some on the drill bit. Now, to find my punch mark. There it is, right there. I need to get a divot on there before I lubricate this, evidently. Yes, I'm in the right spot. Now we can get our oil feed machine going. And so that I don't bend and break the drill bit, I'm pushing on the back of the drill, not the handle. When you push on the handle, you tend to flex the drill bit. That's how a lot of drill bits get broken. I'd like to use a little faster drill, but this is the only one I have at home right now. My other one's at another project. Off site. Through to the other plate. Wasn't too hard. We can see this hole getting bigger here, so we're we're starting to come through the outside plate. We're drilling into the inside plate now. Slow my drill bit down a little bit. So you get a lot of chips out of there, even at a low speed with some with some pressure. I imagine I'm putting about 30 pounds on it. 20, 30, something like that. Pilot hole is getting bigger, so we're starting to cut through. 
Look at those chips coming out of there. There we go. Boom. Get some bananas. I like bananas. Bananas and apples. We're out of apples too. I noticed a little bit of water coming out of my air tool. Probably time to drain this tank. Yeah, I'd say there's a little bit of water in it. I should have got most of it. Dump my metal shavings in the trash. It says oil daily. There are special oils. And I have some. I can't find it right now. Marvel Air Tool Oil. It's my favorite. The air is going to, the oil and air is going to come out here. this thing a little lube get some I can get rid of this jack now move all my tools to the other side and drill the other hole and here's the end result the hole on the left side of the trailer this side's got pinches in it and you got to make sure you don't try to start the bolt with these uh, pinches this is a kind of lock where they push the divot into here so the bolt can never vibrate off so we want to thread into this side where the threads are clean. There we go. If you're new to using an impact wrench, always make sure you've turned the bolt on a few turns at least before you hit it with an impact. Because if you've got it cross-threaded, it's going to ruin it all the way immediately. Because it's definitely going to turn. There we go. The baby's going nowhere. Well, to recap, we've uh, jacked the trailer up properly, got the old axle out of there, put the new axle in, cover drilling holes. This baby's done. Now, I have uh, to get some new tires, and I'm going to repaint the rims before they go on, so i got a few little projects like that to do. Essentially, uh, I'll jack this trailer up in the front, remove the two front jack stands, jack it up in the back, remove the two back jack stands, and we'll set her on the ground. Now I have to raise it up a little bit. That other axle was so collapsed that when I jacked it up and got the wheels off the ground um, to remove the old axle, this axle here, the, uh, I, have to, I have to raise this trailer up like maybe another two or three inches to get the wheels on it now. But I don't want to put the wheels on it because we need to refinish the wheels and get new tires for them. So this will be the end of this video and I thank you for watching the Crafted Channel. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I do all kinds of cool projects. Um, I've never put an axle on a trailer before but it was easy. You can do it too. It'll take you a little longer if you got one of these things to bug you.